Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. Welcome back for another installment of Craft Distillery Monday here on the Bourbon Road. We would like to thank our friends at Premium Bar Products for sponsoring this episode. If you're ready to step up your game at your home bar, check out premiumbarproducts.com to choose from their wide selection of glassware, all of which can be custom engraved with your personal message or logo. And there's no minimum order. So after the episode, head over to premiumbarproducts.com and check out everything they have to offer. Now, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. I'm Mike Hyatt. This is the Bourbon Road. And once again, Mike, in my basement. Well, you know, we find ourselves in here and maybe we should call this the Craft Distillery Studio. You know what? Here's what I think. We need to step out of the box. We need to go out to the the goat petting zoo out there, grab a seat on the bench and record a podcast episode. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) The Billy Goat has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, I got us another craft distillery to try. Um, they're they got a great reputation. You're seeing their stuff on social media. You're seeing them out there on Facebook. Now, this is not a bourbon, though. I brought a wheat whiskey for yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Well, I like wheat whiskeys. Yeah. So let's let's talk about a couple of wheat whiskeys before we talk about this one. All right. So we got Bernheim. Probably like a granddad of wheat whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you got Woodford Reserve that released their uh, wheat whiskey That's two right. years ago or last year. That's right. Who else has got a wheat whiskey? You have Redemption yep. that has a wheat whiskey. And then you got all these craft distilleries that Dave Pickerel was part of, and he's put his hands in those. And I guess if you'd say it was wheated bourbon or wheat whiskey, this is the predominant grain would be wheat. Okay. Um, a little bit smoother of a grain, right? Softer yeah. on the palate. Now, this is a three-year-old wheat whiskey. It's straight. It's a uh, cast strength. Well, let's tell them what it is. This is Dry Fly out of Washington. Okay. So, this is not the first Washington whiskey we've reviewed in sure recent ain't. days. Yeah, we, we've been hitting a couple different states lately. Yeah. We did a couple in Virginia. We have did a couple in Washington, and we'll be doing a couple in Texas. So we're getting out of, getting out of a, our comfort zone of Tennessee and Kentucky. So dry fly. So what – now, this is something to do with fishing, right? I mean, dry fly. This is well, fly a, fishermen. On the bottle, you see a little boat on the back with two guys in it. One's paddling down a, a – probably a western river, I would call it. Another one's slinging a – fly out there all the way around on the bottle to the fly on the front. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen a label on a bottle transition from the front of the label all the way to the back of the label, and the two are tied together with that fly line That's from the fishing nice. pole. That's pretty cool. Um, a nice bottle. They even have a, a stamped on the bottom of the bottle of dry fly. Um, a little bit bigger. I would call this the size of a Stag Junior bottle. That's uh, it looks it looks a little like um the Rebel Yell bottle. Yeah, a little bit wider I think. Uh it's hey, got that heavy glass base on the yeah. bottom maybe to keep it from tipping over. Um I'm excited about it. It's 120 proof, so it should be right up your alley. Yeah. It's a li- it's it's a high proof, but it's a light color. Now that might be that it's cuz it's 3 years and it's aged out there in Washington. Okay. Different climate. So we don't know specifically the mash bill on this. I know, but well, the proof. But the proof is one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty. So this is a hot whiskey as far as proof goes. Let's Most we'll definitely. find out whether or not it's hot on the nose and hot on the palate. It's actually kind of got a really light nose to it, doesn't it? Not not overly ethanol. And I would expect that out of a wheat whiskey to be a little bit more lighter on the nose. You don't get that corn just flowing through. Yeah, I'm not getting a lot of baking spice, not a deep caramel to it. It's just kind of a light honey, um, a sweet honey. 
a little bit of a, I mean, I'm getting a little bit of a nut to it, but it's kind of like a sunflower seed. I don't know that I've ever gotten a sunflower seed on a hmm. honey and sunflower seeds. I get the honey. I don't know about the sunflower seeds. I I was thinking of something more like almonds. I was trying to, I was trying to, I mean, I'm getting a nutty flavor to it, but I was trying to figure out what that nut was. And I mean, it could be an almond, but sunflower seeds came to mind. You know, whiskey does that. Whiskey tends to cause you those memories, those memories that you have of, of tastings and food. It causes them to come out. And I'm getting something, I'm getting a little bit of a, you ever had a like candied, like, pineapples like those dried pineapples are super sweet i'm getting that powdery that powdery from the double bubble powder on it oh yeah yeah i get that okay so for me i'm gonna i'm gonna sort of consolidate all that i'm getting a very light nose but it is a sweet Honey, sunflower, and double bubble nose on it. Now, you know what I'm getting? Yeah. You ever opened up a bag of jelly beans? Yeah. Smelt those jelly beans? Yeah. That sugary goodness? <laughs> <laughs> jelly bellies? Jelly bellies. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm getting. It's got it. a great nose. I like it. I like For it a, a younger lot. whiskey, yeah. it's got a great nose on it. Let's taste it. Let's do it. Cheers. That's, you know, that's got a deep, rich flavor to it. Kind of surprising for a wheat whiskey. I don't. I didn't expect that kind of richness to come out in the in the palate. For as for as young as it is, it's very bold. A three year cast strength wheat whiskey. It's not, a little, little dry. It's not overpowering though. No. no. I get a little bit of not buttery, just maybe some toffees coming through. A little bit of vanilla. You ever tasted vanilla that you put in your, like, in baking? Like, just took a drop of it? Just a drop of that? I've never actually taken a drop in my mouth, no. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not curious. sure why you did that. but <laughs> Well, I'm just curious what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, we always bring, when we go to Mexico, we always bring back several bottles of pure vanilla. Mm -hmm. um, like, to give them to friends and family. And, uh... I, we, I think we brought you guys back some vanilla last man, year. Man. Yeah, I'm getting those Neko candies, too, on the palate. It, it's, that, it's that chalky, powdery. The same with the, the, the double bubble, kind of the whatever that. What is that? The cornstarch they put on the outside? Yeah. Is that what it is? The same with the, the Neko's. I'll tell you what, that's got a little bit of pepper on the back. It end does. Of it. it does. Surprisingly. You know, sometimes you find that with these wheat whiskeys, and it's kind of surprising, isn't it? When you get that, it, it's like you get this peppery back in, and you're like, where's that coming from? There's no rye in this. <laughs> does that come from the barrel still, you know? I, I think it does. I think the. I think it does. I think it comes from the barrel. And uh, for me, it's very welcoming. I like it because I like to taste something that's soft up front, and gives you a little bit of a shout on the back end. I like that. I think this place is doing great, great stuff. Now, Mike, I know these are short shows, and we, and, and, you know, on these reviews, but I'm going to take another pour. How long have you had this bottle? Ooh, I think on a, about a year now. I've had it. I saw it. Oh, actually, didn't see this. So. Me and Vivian went out to Kansas City to watch a Kansas City Chiefs football game, and her cousin or husband came from Utah, and he knew I wanted a bottle of this, so he picked it up, and we did a little whiskey swap. I brought a whole bunch of Kentucky stuff. I think I bought him, brought him three or three Blanton's bottles, brought him some Eagle Rare, a Henry McKenna, a Caribou. I brought him a little bit of everything, brought it out you there. You were hauling gold there. A little, little bit. <laughs> Making sure the truck was locked up. And then somebody tried to break into my pickup while we were out there, and I had it all locked up in the back of my bed. And somebody tried to break into the tonneau cover, um, and I went out there, and my tonneau cover latch is all bent up and everything. But it worked because it they couldn't get in there. They must have tried and unsuccessfully. And 
luckily I lucked out and stuff. But he, we traded, and I, I brought this back to something. You know, I can't be the self-proclaimed weedy king of Kentucky and not have this wheat whiskey on a shelf. So, what do you have to say to our listeners about how they should enjoy this? Should they enjoy it as a neat pour? Should they try it as a mixer? Now, this is a $50 bottle. Okay. Somewhere in that range. I think it's $52 MSRP. I don't know. You drink how you want to. I'd sit down. And this It's every bit of 120 proof, I think. Um, it, it could sneak up on you, and you have that old wobbly leg going on, and like you don't run up two or three miles. So I would say I'd sit down and sip this. This is definitely a sipper. Yeah, I'm not sure I would try to uh, try to mix this with anything. And, you know, maybe maybe a highball. Uh, I don't know that it would be. I don't know that this would really make great old fashioned. It might make though. You just put it with a little. L81, though. Yeah. Now, I think this might be good in a meal or an L81 or a ginger ale and bourbon. It might be good. Yeah. Uh, it does have a little bit of a a bite on the back end. And that's that, that uh, pepper. Yeah, that peppery. Surprisingly so. Beautiful bottle. I think they're doing a good job here. $50. Not dollars. Yeah. I mean, hey, everybody knows their own wallet, right? They do. You know what? What will. Uh, What's a bottle of double oaked Woodford cost? About you know, that. About that, right? Yeah. Um, so if you're going to compare it to other whiskeys, I wouldn't compare it to anything else. You know, just if you want to buy it, you, you're a weeded person, you're looking for something a little bit different. This is something. Their story, they, they just say they like to fly fish um, on the back. You was reading their, their story there. I got to salute them for that. They didn't try to come up with some fancy story or some backstory or anything like that. They are who they are, right? So let me let me read a little bit from the bottle because I did this on the last episode. True American farm-to-bottle whiskeys from Washington State. With a fly fisherman's patient and an eye for detail, this whiskey starts with grain grown on the Wasota farm, a 116-year-old homestead farm 30 miles from our distillery. We mash, ferment, distill, and age every single drop. No fish stories here. This is a real small batch. Handcrafted American whiskey. Thank you for choosing Dry Fly Whiskey. And then it goes on to say, listen to the sound of the river and you will get a trout. These guys are true fishermen, I think. Now, they do have a bourbon. I'd like to try to get my hands on that bourbon and try that. Give it a review. And I, I think these craft distillers we're trying, everybody wants to see what they're making. I'd say, once again, if you're a craft distillery out there and you want me and Jim to sip on your whiskey a little bit as old friends and just uh, give it a review, give it a, our tasting notes, I guess. We don't do them like everybody else does them. We just sit down and talk about it, really. That's right. Well, Dry Fly Mike, I think that uh, I'll sit down with you anytime. And have a pour of this. I think it's something that uh, and I'm not a big weeded whiskey guy. Let's let's face it. I, you know where I stand. Yeah, but this is good stuff. I, but you very like respect. That, you like that pepper on that back. End. I do. I do like that. And it's right at that 120 proof. But it'll fool the nose will fool you. So everybody, if you are not following us on Facebook, you're not following us on Instagram, and you're not in our bourbon roadies group on facebook we we invite you to join us follow us like us our facebook group is uh, just a bunch of really nice people hanging out talking whiskey sharing photos sharing bar pictures called the bourbon roadies on facebook search it out you'll find us come on in and join us we'd love to have you as a member yeah i i love to see people's new photos or bars i just the the conversation that's going on we got even master distillers in there, distillery owners in there talking with with our listeners, talking with the roadies. It, it's just a great community we're building. It's like a little family. Um, so much shit so that me and Vivian, we had a grandchild, and I shared that photo in there. And I, so many people congratulate us on our first grandchild, and we're pretty happy about that. So make sure you uh, look for those photos and uh, – I'll be trying to do an episode with my son down there while we're going to visit him. That'd be awesome, Mike. We're just a we're just a podcast. We're just bourbon bullshitters. 
Yeah, we're just two dudes. Two, two dudes. You know, we're non-pretentious. We don't pretend to be anything. We're not. We're not. Uh, we're not telling you how you should drink your whiskey. You drink the whiskey the way you want to. Yeah, if you want to mix it with Coke, heck, we might even do an episode about that. Just hey, what makes Coke taste better? Yeah, that's right. Or Pepsi if you're a Pepsi guy. Or so guy. we are the Bourbon Road. We do this twice a week. On Mondays, you'll hear us talk about a new craft distillery. On Wednesdays, we'll interview somebody really cool. And uh, we got some great ones coming up, Mike. I'm excited. Me too. We'll see you all down the Bourbon Road. Cheers. Cheers. We do appreciate all of our listeners, and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the Bourbon Road. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and if so, we would appreciate if you'd subscribe and rate us a five-star with a review on iTunes. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Bourbon Road. That way you'll be kept in the loop on all the Bourbon Road happenings. You can also visit our website at thebourbonroad.com to read our blog, listen to the show, or reach out to us directly. We always welcome comments or suggestions. And if you have an idea for a particular guest or topic, be sure to let us know. And again, thanks for hanging out with us.